You know, I was really hoping the braid that I put in would give me nice, beautiful curls or waves, but instead it just kind of looks like I slept on it funky, but that's okay. We're just going to pretend like it looks really good. Hey, what's up you guys? It's Sarah. How you doing? Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 feel-good movies. If you know me, you know I love things that make me feel good and give me warm and fuzzy feelings inside. I love comfort books and comfort food and comfort movies. I love all the feel-good things and so I thought I would make a video of my top 10 favorite feel-good movies in case you wanted to feel as awesome as I do when I watch these because let's be honest we all need a pick-me-up now and then and there's no better way to do that than putting on one of your favorite movies. So grab some popcorn and come join with me as we discuss discuss the top 10 comfort movies Sarah's style. Let's go. Number one, I don't know if I talk about these movies on my channel very much, but Pirates of the Caribbean is one of my all-time favorite series. They're only the first four movies. One through three are my favorite, four is acceptable, five is garbage, and we're not even going to talk about the fact that they're making more, okay? Okay. Pirates of the Caribbean is one of my absolute favorites, and so whenever I watch it, I am automatically put in a better mood. It's so cheerful, it's so funny, and it's got enough action and adventure and drama that keeps me interested, so it's one of those feel-good, like, distract-me movies and suck me into a world that's different from my own. I love it so much, and that's why it's number one on my list for feel-good movies. Number two is To All the Boys I've Loved Before. You've heard me talk about this book and movie before if you've been around my channel for a little bit. I absolutely love the series, I absolutely love the adaptations on Netflix, 10 out of 10, they are always go-to for me if I need some cheering up in my life. Number three, Legally Blonde. This one might not apply so much if you're a boy, but ladies, especially my blondes, you know this is a great movie. This is our anthem if you're a blonde. And you might be saying like, Sarah, you're not blonde. I think I am, okay? I've got a lot of colors in my hair. Comment below if you want to tell me what color you think my hair is because I get a lot of different answers when I ask people, but I like to think it's blonde with a little bit of highlights for other things. But let me know what you think. But anyways, a movie about a smart blonde who realizes she can be more than a trophy wife and goes to Harvard Law to follow love who is like really great about feminism and supporting other women and she proves herself and discovers who she's meant to be and they tackle so many great things in that movie you know like the professor Callahan comes on to her and dealing with sexual harassment in the workplace and in school and she falls in love and she also supports her other women and she deals with mean girls and it's just so good ex-boyfriends and finding love and figuring out who you are Legally Blonde has it all. It was so ahead of its time. I love that movie. Definitely turn it on, ladies. If you're feeling down, I promise you it will pick you up. Number four, The Devil Wears Prada. Again, it's a little bit more of a feminine movie, but I know some boys that enjoy it as well, and I think it is so cute. I actually hate uh, Anne Hathaway's boyfriend in the movie. Nate, I think his name is. He sucks. I could go on a rant about him forever, but I know the internet has kind of caught on to the fact that he sucks now, too. People used to think he was really great. Not so much. But the movie itself, really like, except the fact that she ends up with Nate and she doesn't leave his sorry butt because I totally think she should have, but it's fine. I enjoyed the movie. I think Emily Blunt is hilarious. I really like Emily Blunt and she does such a great job in that movie. It's got Meryl Streep, it's got Anne Hathaway, it's just... It's great. Number five, the Beauty and the Beast live action version is my personal comfort movie, but of course the animation is fantastic as well. The live action specifically though is my comfort movie because I love Emma Watson, I love Luke Evans, I love Dan Stevens, and it's just such a stacked cast. And the cinematography and the costumes and just everything on screen is so beautiful, it's wonderful to watch, it's so visually and aesthetically pleasing, and the songs are fantastic, and the story is so cute, and you just turn it on and you can't be upset by the time you finish the end of that movie. It's like, see? Everything's gonna be okay. It's wonderful. If you haven't watched it, go put it on. Number six, going on the train of Disney, we have Pocahontas. Once again, you cannot be upset when you're watching Pocahontas. The music is fantastic. Don't even tell me that it's not. Plus, it has this whole nostalgic feel that I love so much, and it's just so well done. And don't even come at me like, oh, it's not historically accurate. Like, you're right, it's not. But Disney made it a great, great movie, and yes, they skipped a lot of the unfortunate truths that came with Pocahontas. But ignoring all of that and just focusing on the story itself as if it were fiction and, you know, not based off something in history, 10 out of 10! 
again, so good. I love Pocahontas. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. Number seven, Little Women. If you don't know, I also really love Little Women. I love all of these movies, obviously, but Little Women 2019 edition by Greta Gerwig so phenomenal. If you haven't checked out my review on it, I will link it in the description below. 10 out of 10 recommend Little Women. So good. Cast is stacked. It's got Timothy Chalamet. It's got Saoirse Rowan. It's got Florence Pugh. It's got Emma Watson. Like, if you haven't seen Little Women, please go check it out. And some of you might be saying, Sarah, this is not a feel-good movie, you know, it's kind of sad. And yes, there are sad parts. The way the movie is constructed and portrayed and the sounds and the elements and the sights, it's so comforting to the soul. So even though there are sad parts, it ultimately becomes my comfort movie because there are just so many amazing things about it. Number eight, Harry Potter. Are you even surprised? This is like the best ever. Obviously, huge fan of the series. I'm a Ravenclaw. If you want to tell me what house you are, tell me in the comments below. Love to hear what house you are. Love to talk about it. I am a Ravenclaw and a little bit of Hufflepuff and a little bit of Gryffindor, but primarily Ravenclaw. And I love Harry Potter. Obviously, I have two chocolate frogs right here. And the movies will always and forever be my safe haven. If I want to escape, the real world. I'm just gonna jump into Hogwarts for two hours. I'll catch you on the flip side. Harry Potter, man. If you haven't seen it, pfft, I don't know what you're doing. Number nine, High School Musical. And I'm gonna say primarily the first one, but also the third one. The second one is meh to me. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I love High School Musical, and if you love High School Musical, you know what I'm talking about. If you've seen High School Musical, the musical, the series, but not the original High School Musicals, I don't know what you're doing. You're probably a new generation. Go watch the movies. Obviously, High School Musical, the musical, the series is awesome as well, but nothing beats the original High School Musical movies. So good. It's such a big part of my childhood, so the nostalgia just comes flooding back when I watch them. I love all of the music. Kenny Ortega obviously does a great job, and the cast is awesome as well. And last, number 10, we have Divergent. I absolutely love this movie. Only the first one, though. We're not going to talk about Insurgent, and don't even get me started on Allegiant. But the first one's really good. I love the first Divergent movie because it's so action-packed, it's so inspiring and motivating. You watch that movie and you feel like you can do anything. I feel like, especially as a young woman, growing up with this book series and then seeing it transfer into the movie. And I love Shalane Woodley and Ansel Elgort and Miles Teller and Theo James. The directing of the first movie is fantastic. It's so good. It just makes me feel like I can just do anything. Like. You get that dauntless energy going and uh, it's so inspiring, it's so powerful, so Divergent I always put in if I need to feel inspired. That is all for my top 10 favorite comfort movies. If you had any that were the same as me, please let me know in the comments below or tell me your top 10 favorite comfort movies. I would love more suggestions. Like I said in the beginning, I'm all about the comfort movies. So I would love to hear from you if you want to tell me what you think are comfort movies. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow me on social media, I would love for you to hang out with me. Over on Instagram, we are at the underscore writing corner. And if you want to follow me on either Twitter or TikTok, it's at Sarah M. Caroline, and that's Sarah with an H. It is the same handle for both Twitter and TikTok, so click the links in the description below that I put for you because it's super easy, and you can go follow me over on social media. I would love to see your bright and smiling face. And do me a favor, if you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up for me and hit the subscribe button so you can hang out with me because I make new videos every Thursday, and I would love for you to join me. I hope you're having a great day. I hope this video made you smile. I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!